We are looking at, this morning, the theme eschatology. Um, the, the question still remains, is what is eschatology? Eschatology is a part of theology concerned with final events of history or the ultimate destiny of humanity. This concept is commonly referred to as the end of the world. Or the study of end times. So when you think of theology, two books has to come to mind the book of Revelations and the book of Daniel. The Bible says when you study the book of Revelation, there are special blessings that God bestows upon you just to read Revelation. And when you read this book, make sure that you organize Bible commentaries. And also organize yourself a Bible dictionary. And you'll have an understanding when you have a commentary and a dictionary reading the book of Revelation. And it, it's, very it's, it's very imperative for us to understand the end times. And, and, and also to understand the events of the second coming of Christ and after. So I want us to turn to the book of 1 Corinthians 15. First Corinthians 15, 52, starting from 52, 1 Corinthians 15, 52. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last tremp, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption. And this mortal must put on immortality. 54, so when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is your victory? This is a very powerful chapter. Hey, When you begin to read it, you, you start to see a whole lot of things because it's heavily loaded. 
It says, in the twinkling of an eye, it also says, at the last tram. It talks about the trumpet that it will sound. It talks about the dead in Christ will rise first. And when is this happening? When you look at the trumpet in the Old Testament, the trumpet was used for two things. To Simon to worship, and to Simon to war. But this trumpet here, it's the trumpet that is raising the dead. And it says, we shall be changed. And we don't know when this is going to take place. The Bible says no one knows the day and the hour, but the Father alone knows. It is God who knows. And you, you cannot talk about eschatology and not mention the event of the second coming and after of Christ. You can't talk about that. Now, this, this book of 1 Corinthians 15.52 is it's talking about the first event that will take place. The first event that's going to take place when Christ comes. When, when you see that, you have to know that it's the end of the world. The world is coming to an end. The first event is rapture. And then the second event, after the rapture, the second event is called the judgment seed of Christ or the Bema seed. A lot, a lot, of, a lot of saints and churches confuse the judgment seed of Christ and the white throne judgment. So it's very important for us as, as a church to understand the judgment seat of Christ, the difference of the judgment seat of Christ and of the white throne judgment. These events, they take place in different times. You start with the rapture, and after the rapture, then is the bema seat. What is rapture? The word rapture means to carry away. It's a Latin verb. It means to carry away or to transport people to transport people from one place to another place so god in his plan has has this event called rapture he's the one who knows when the rapture is going to take place we don't know but we have to be ready for the rapture when he comes when he comes he's coming for the spotless church he's coming for a church without wrinkles He's coming for a holy church. And there's no way that Jesus will not come back. He is coming back. He is coming back. I know that the adversary has stopped the church from talking about the second coming of Jesus Christ. We don't talk about the second coming of Jesus Christ anymore. We think it's not in line in the Bible. It's in the Bible and he is coming back. If Jesus is not coming back, why should we have church? Why should, I, why should I go to church? I can't go to church if Jesus is not coming back. I will not be a believer if Jesus is not coming back. I will never accept Christ as my Lord and Savior if he's not coming back. I will not read the Bible if he's not coming back. You have the rapture, you have the beam. I just want to go through these events. You have the rapture, you have the judgment seat of Christ, which is called the beamer seat. 
and you have the Antichrist. And, and, and you have, I think you're beaming them, them, and you have the great tribulation. The great tribulation that is, the church is no longer there. We are no longer there. Once you talk about great tribulation, there's no church. The church cannot go through the tribulation. But there are, there are different theories about the great tribulation. There, are, there, are, there is a company of, of, of theologians that believe that we're going to go through the tribulation. And there's another theory that says we're not going to go through the tribulation. But you have to be looking and checking in the scriptures if we're going to go or we're not going. The fifth event is called the burden of the Battle of Armageddon. The, that is that this takes place at the end of the seventh year. Remember the Bema seed. When you talk about Bema seed and you talk about the great the, the, the tribulation, the tribulation is taking place on earth and in space, not in heaven. It says we'll meet him in the space. In space. We, the, in space, there's another event. There's something that is happening in, 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 in space, and there's something happening right here on earth. In space, we are receiving crowns. The Bema seed was not a, a judgment seed where people are judged. It's a seed of reward. People are receiving crowns there. People receive crowns there. You're not judged. You're not cast into the lake of fire. You're receiving crowns. That's why it's called the Bema seed. Now, when we are there for seven years, we're going to be in space for seven years. Down here is the great tribulation. Then you're talking the great tribulation, which will take a period of seven years. We'll take a period of seven years in space with Christ. He's crowning us there. And here on earth, you have now the Antichrist who's giving people the mark of the beast. If you don't have that mark of the beast, you cannot trade. You can't buy, you can't run a business. Your children cannot go to school. You need the mark of the beast on your, on your, on your hand or on your forehead. Because why does it say forehead? There are people who don't have hands. Okay, there are people who don't have hands. But you do have a head. So if you don't have hands, that triple six, the mark of the beast, will be inserted on the forehead. And therefore, your ID and everything, when you travel, it will be known where you are. When you are standing next to another person and that person claims that he's been raped, they will say, no, you were not there because this mark of the beast, it will show. And then the person who will be giving the mark of the beast, that is the Antichrist. Okay. And if you, if, you look, if you look at his characteristics, he's called an intellectual genius, a military genius a commercial genius, a religious genius. Okay. This antichrist will be so smart. Other theologians believe that he's going to be a Jew because Jews are anticipating their Christ to come back. So he's going to, you have two beasts. You have two beasts. You have two beasts in the, in the book of Revelation. You've got the antichrist, the first beast represents. One sushitanga na naifi nolori beast. Udeworo kwamfiwa, gabatu babit. Is the antichrist and the false prophet. The Antichrist and the false prophet. This false, pro false prophet will be so dangerous. He'll be able to command fire. I, these imposters that we are seeing here, yeah. the imposters that we are seeing, no, they're not doing the real thing. But this one will do the real thing. We're talking about the, the events. Don't forget that the events of the second coming of Christ and after. <laughs> And, and, and there's no rapture. There's no rapture for, for Lucifer and his demons. There is no salvation for, for the devil and demons. And, and, and there's no resurrection for the devil. You leave me to say this. There's only resurrection for human beings, for people, not angels cannot be resurrected. You cannot resurrect something which does not die. You cannot resurrect something which does not have human bones. You cannot resurrect something which does not have fingerprints, human fingerprints. You cannot reproduce something which did not come from the womb man. You can't resurrect something which is not eternal. Therefore, the devil did not come from a womb. There's no salvation for him. 
he does not have the prince that you have. Now, you are, look at your neighbor and say, you are so important. You, you are very important. You see, the blood of God, is, the blood of God is the only currency that occupies time, space, and eternity at once. God, when God wants to pay, he will, he will use the blood. He does not use any other product, but he uses the blood, his own blood. And, and if you look at all these creatures, you look at the angels, you look at Lucifer, you look at demons, you look at the animals, and you look at us. He only pays for humanity. He only pays for you. He will never pay for anything that he has created except you. Now you'll say, why is God supposed to pay? What is all this? You know, I've, I've been asking a question this year. From the beginning of last year and this year, I'm asking this question. I ask people, I call Cindy Trim, I call all my friends, and I ask them this question. And I said, I said, why do we have human beings and God? What is all that? You see that question? The question that I'm asking you is connected to time. It's connected to time. You're asking because of time. If there was no time, we would not ask that kind of question. Because if you say, why do we have, then we'll say, where do they come from? And when were they created? And this God, where does he come from? And you'll be, you'll be using a language which God does not use. God does not use. In his speaking vocab, he does not have come from. He does not use that. That is human terminology. Now, God, God says, let us create man. But there has never been a time when God did not know that he was going to create man after his similitude. There was no time because he's not bound by time. And he's not bound by legalities of time. He's free from the tyrant of time. Now you'll say to me, Dr. Pruma, why this rapture and why these wars? What is really happening? It looks like we are part of this war of gods. The war of God and the devil. Why are we part of this? Why all this? The war began in heaven. It does not start in earth. Revelation 12, 7 says, War broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought back with his angels. And they were defeated in heaven. This is Lucifer deceiving one third of angels. And trying to recruit Michael. And Michael remained with two thirds. And says, I'm not joining you. But there was war. There was war of angels. Angels fighting Lucifer. Two thirds against one third, and they were defeated and cast down to earth. That's when the war began. You have to understand that if you can check Barabesa the whole week from Monday, today is Saturday, you check your life from Monday to Saturday or to Sabbath, you will find that you are going to experience problems of one third. One third of your life will have problems. But two-thirds of your life does not have problems. Yes, because he deceived one-third. And two-thirds in heaven was pronounced non posse pecere. When the devil was fighting the archangel Michael, he was defeated. God was not part of the war right there. No, he was not fighting. Michael, it's, it's the, it was the war of angels. Now, after the war... The devil is defeated and is cast down to earth. Don't forget that. And angels, wait a minute, and angels were created before man. You have to understand that. And you don't have the time. There was no time, and there's still no time in heaven. Now, when, when Lucifer, this is the point I want to make, when Lucifer was cast down to earth, God pronounced the two thirds remaining in heaven, non posse pecari, meaning not able to sin. Okay. Oh. Okay. Okay. 
There cannot be another devil in heaven because God has pronounced them non pacificare They can't see anymore. So God, now we see God coming down and creating man. This is now that Lucifer has been cast down. He comes. The war continues. The war continues. And this, he says the battle is not yours. It's between him and the adversary. Now, God plants two trees in the garden. He creates men. He creates the universe. He creates the earth. Okay? And he puts, he puts two trees in the middle of the garden. It's God who planted that. He plants the two trees in the garden of Eden. And now, wait a minute, wait a minute. He's planting two trees in the garden. And the, the war, now the war has to continue based on one tree. So it looks like there was an agreement between the two gods that now, if you want to fight me as God, let's use the tree. If man is the tree, he's going to fall. That means you have won. But God had the plan. He, why should God plant a tree in the garden of Eden, the tree that giveth knowledge of what is good and bad, knowing that you are going to eat it? Why is God doing that? We, we, we are in serious trouble here. We might take it very light. We are in trouble here. Now, now, God, you see, you have to understand that God did not create men before planting the trees. Now, in the garden, two trees, the tree of life and the tree that giveth knowledge of what is good and bad. It was planted before we were created. That means in the garden, the devil was already in that tree. Because the, 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 the knowledge of good and bad. He came to the garden before we were in the garden. Yeah. Now this is, this, this, I think the, 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 there was an agreement of uh, how they are going to fight. Mother how Jesus. this war is going to happen. Because oh, oh, now God says, he says, he, he says, let us make man. The tree is already there. Those two trees are already there. But he says, let us make man. When he, created, when he was creating angels, he did not say, let us create Angels, you know, in, but when he comes to you, creating you, he says, Let us create man now, a different creature, a very special creature. And we are going to impart our image and, and insert it and ingest it on the inside of this person. Now, he uses the ground, soil, soil becomes the progenitor of soul. Lucifer, when he's looking at you, there's something that he's scared of. And that is the image. And when he's looking at you, you have to tell him and say, bow. Because you are a custodian of the image of God. He's got to bow. That's why the Bible says he's under your feet. Every time when you, when you, when you go through precarious situations you have to know that that situation has to bow and you have to make it bow you have to tell it that you have forgotten to bow you have forgotten to go prostrate on the ground the soul and the soil the soil becomes the co-creator with God and becomes the progenitor of the soil, of the soul. And the soul has dominion. Soil does not have dominion. But the soul, your soul has dominion. God gave the soul dominion. But the soil is the mother of the soul. And the soul can command the soil. You have to understand that. It's time that Limpopo, we get a paradigm shift and start commanding the soil. When you see problems, you command them. Yeah. When there is difficulty, you, program, you, you command that situation. So we are, we are given prerogatives to command the soil. All these problems and illnesses are coming from the soil. Yeah. 